The following program contains subject matter that may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. In Bram Stoker's gothic horror novel Dracula, the titular Count is a vampire obsessed with drinking the blood of his victims. But even Dracula's thirst for blood pales in comparison to that of real-life serial killer, cannibal, and necrophiliac Richard Chase who in the late 1970s committed some of the most shocking murders in American history. But what exactly led Richard Chase to murder six people, and what was it about his crimes that earned them the nickname, The Vampire of Sacramento? A frail, disheveled man is admitted to a California hospital and diagnosed with blood poisoning. The man is 25-year-old Richard Chase, and as the hospital staff begin to investigate the cause of his illness, they discover that Chase has been injecting himself with rabbit's blood. He's suffering from severe delusions and hypochondria, and believes that his blood is turning to dust. He rationalizes that the only way to save himself is to reinvigorate his body with the blood of other animals. He also believes that his heart is shrinking, his stomach is backwards, and that there are bones growing out of the back of his head. They also discover that sometimes he even places the blood in a blender, along with other organs from small animals he's killed, and drinks the concoction like a smoothie. After leaving the hospital, he's placed in a mental institution but promptly escapes. Eventually he's captured and placed in an institution for the criminally insane. While in the asylum, doctors learn about Chase's belief that he is being targeted by a secret Nazi crime syndicate who are trying to poison him. One day, Chase captures two birds through the bars of his window, slices their throats open, and drinks their blood. He earns the nickname Dracula from the staff. He is diagnosed with schizophrenia, given medication, and released to the care of his mother in 1976. Against doctors' orders, she weans him off the medication. It's uncertain why she does this, especially considering that Chase's bizarre behavior is nothing new. Even as a young child, he had a habit of torturing small animals and starting fires, two traits that are common among children who grow up to be serial killers. Chase becomes lost in his delusions again. He continues to kill animals, including neighborhood pets, in order to drink their blood. His organ smoothies become his only food source, and his weight plummets to 145 pounds. Two other bizarre incidents follow, one involving a dead cat that Chase eats in front of his mother, and another where police find him drenched in cow's blood. Amazingly, no charges are brought against Chase for any of these incidents. But the real horror doesn't start until December 29th, 1977. Ambrose Griffin a 51-year-old father of two is helping his wife bring groceries into the house when Chase pulls up in his car and fires two shots with a 22 caliber handgun. One of the shots hits Griffin in the chest and he dies shortly after. 13 days later, Chase breaks into the home of Teresa Wallen, who is three months pregnant. He shoots her three times, twice in the head, and then takes her corpse into her bedroom, where he rapes her dead body, splits her open, and removes some of her organs. He uses a bucket to collect her blood and takes it into the bathtub to bathe in it. He then slices off one of her nipples and drinks her blood. Finally, he stuffs her mouth with dog feces before leaving. On January 23, only two days after killing Wallen, he buys two puppies from a neighbor, kills them, drinks their blood, and then leaves them on the neighbor's front lawn. By this point, Chase is completely lost in his delusions. He now believes that the Nazi syndicate that has been trailing him has access to UFOs. He believes that his only hope for staying alive is to drink more human blood. Four days after killing the puppies, Chase enters the home of 38-year-old Evelyn Maroth. Maroth is in the bathtub while a neighbor named Dan Meredith looks after her six-year-old son Jason and 22-month-old nephew David. Dan hears a noise in the hallway and goes to investigate. He is shot in the head point-blank by Chase and dies immediately. Chase then shoots both of the children and heads into the bathroom, where he finds Mrs. Maroth. He shoots her in the head, 
and much like he did with Wallen, he drags her corpse into the bedroom where he rapes her post-mortem. When he's finished, he stabs her multiple times and once again drains her blood in a bucket. He drinks it, then heads back out to retrieve David's corpse. He splits David's skull open and eats the brains. Chase is suddenly spooked by a knock on the door and flees with David's body. The person knocking is a six-year-old girl who was looking for Jason. The killer leaves behind heaps of evidence, including a bloody handprint. Chase drives away in Dan Meredith's car, and when he gets home, he eats some of David's organs and drinks his blood. He places the baby's body in a box and dumps it outside of a church. Police question people around town and are intrigued by the story of a woman named Nancy Holden who had gone to high school with Chase and had recently had a strange encounter with him outside of a shopping center near the Wallen home. He insisted that she give him a ride, but she refused as she was frightened by his appearance and behavior. She was shown a police sketch of a disheveled man wearing an orange parka and said that Chase was wearing the same clothes when he approached her. They also obtained gun registration records that showed that Chase owned a 22 caliber semi-automatic handgun, the same weapon that had been used in the murders. Chase is arrested and the police search his home. The entire place smells of rotted flesh and it seems as though everything is stained in blood. They find body parts in his fridge as well as the putrid blender he used to grind organs. They find a calendar with the word today written on the dates of the Wallen and Maroth murders. There are 42 other future dates on the calendar that are also marked with the word today. In 1979, the trial begins. Chase is charged with six counts of murder. The prosecution pushes for the death penalty, while the defense tries to convince the jury to find him guilty of second degree murder, which would result in a life sentence. When asked how he chose his victims, he stated that he only entered a home if the door was unlocked. He felt that an unlocked door was an invitation for him to enter, while a locked door indicated that he was not welcome. Interestingly, it is a part of vampire lore that a vampire cannot enter someone's private home unless they are invited by the owner of the house. On May 8th, the jury finds him guilty of six counts of first degree murder and he is sentenced to die in the gas chamber. On December 26, 1980, Chase is found dead in his cell. He committed suicide by overdosing on prison-administered antidepressants. Now I'd like to know what you think. Is there any way to stop people like Richard Chase from becoming serial killers? Do you think that an intervention at a young age would have helped? Let me know what you think in the comments, and as always, if you liked this video, please subscribe to Cryptic for more.